Hi, my name is Ken Spector and I'm here on behalf of livingeco.com and I'm here at a place called Eco Village in Koreatown in Los Angeles and I'm about to speak with Joe Linton who lives in Eco Village. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Well, let's let's so, go let, let's go look at the chickens. Let's go look at the chickens. <laughs> so we're surrounded by fruit trees, edibles, herbs. Is that what I'm seeing here? Yeah. Well, smell smell this leaf. Tell me what you smell. It smells like lemon. It smells like lemon candy. I like to say lemon even candy. It, it smells sort of it's, sweet. Lemon. Yeah, it's uh, lemon verbena. It's, it's, it's actually a really good. It makes a tea that's a little bit medicinal, but just yummy herbal tea. So there's all kinds of uh, artichokes and herbs and spices and and uh, actually the the garden in the heat of the summer is one of the least nice times in our garden. But anyways, but it's uh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, fruits and veggies growing. Terrific. And, and I see loads of bees. Yeah, the you know, the bees are out in the summer. They're active in the warmest time. We actually have um, bees on the roof that we're not going to go see today. Okay. And uh, You have beehives on the <laughs> roof. We have beehives on the roof. Oh, wow. Um, we practice a thing called backwards beekeeping where we just uh, work with local captured hives, not like European highly uh, chemical input stuff, but oh. we just... Uh, uh, there's a couple of folks who steward the bees and uh, will be harvesting honey soon. Actually, we just started them in the spring, and so it takes a few months before we can uh, get a yield of honey from them. Oh, very but, cool, very cool. So I'm seeing some chickens through this glass yeah. uh, panel window. Yeah, we've got a little enclosure here. We've got a half dozen hens. We actually we used to have roosters, but they were kind of loud and kind of antisocial. They would attack people, so, uh, so now we just keep hens. We eat their eggs, and uh, we we use them. They're actually a really good uh, sort of a tool for clearing weed areas. You can throw up a little enclosure. We call it a chicken tractor, and uh, the the chickens will eat all your weeds, and then uh, and poop in the area and fertilize it for you, and then uh, and then you can garden in that section. So it looks like some construction is going on over yeah, here. Yeah, we're we're you know when we bought these buildings, this this building we bought in '96. Um, it was built in 1920. It was completely thrashed, about half occupied, and about half like unoccupiable. And we've been gradually fixing up all the units. And this is actually the last unit. That, that we're that we're fixing up. There's a guy named Jimmy who uh, who's uh, who's building in here. If you want, we can take a. Yeah, take a I'd look. like to ask you what are some sustainable or eco-friendly things that are being done to the building in terms of refurbishing these rooms. Now we got Adawal and Adawal. and George. We're scraping uh, paint off the floors before sanding it and staining it. I mean uh, varnishing it and. Uh, we're pounding down old nail heads so that that doesn't rip up the sandpaper. Okay. And um, it's gonna look beautiful. Natural floor. Okay, In the well, bathroom. <laughs> um, so uh, we've actually got, I mean this thing, it doesn't look like much, but it's actually got gray water. So when you wash and you use the right soap and stuff, you can send stuff out to the garden. Same thing with the, the flow of the bathtub. So. It's the guy Jimmy who's fixing up this unit, and he's added a lot of those features. And the right, the right soap is. Uh, there's a soap called Oasis, and one of the things you can see here is there's a switch. So when the switch is on sewer, it goes to the sewer. When the switch is on gray water, it goes to the garden. So depending on which, uh, you know, if you're using a strong detergent, uh, you want to send it to the sewer, and if you're using a, a mild soap, there's a brand called Oasis that's actually bio-friendly that's, that's designed to be used on gray water systems. Okay. So this is electric, the actual switch between sewer and gray water. A apparently. Do all of the rooms have that switch between the sewer and the gray water? No, we, we only have, we have six gray water systems uh, in 48 units. Okay. So, and that, and two of them are in that unit. Okay, cool. <laughs> so. Uh, but there's a couple hooked up to washing machines and a couple hooked up to sinks. So unlike other yards that I see throughout Los Angeles, the density of edibles and weeds and things like that is pretty intense here. I mean, what are we looking at? Yeah. This, 
Well, we've got uh, squash growing along here. Let's see, we've got, so you can see some of the, here's like the squash blossom sure. where, where the squash will grow. Those are edible too. Um, we've got some bananas. Actually, you can see the bananas growing yes. right up there. Plum trees on the left. Um, there's some tomatoes growing over on the left uh, down there. And actually, what I can point out here too is our compost system. So okay, let's, take, a, let's take a look at the compost. We have a few different ways of composting and what what we have here is basically we dig a we dig a pit in the ground and we put uh, food and uh, organic waste in it and then at the end of the day there's a volunteer who comes down and and puts a, a small layer of dirt on that and um, and then we just bury it and six months later we can dig it up and it's wonderful soil Perfect. so and we've got put back into the garden yeah exactly so this is the chicken tractor that I mentioned so you put the chicken in here um, and uh, and the chicken eats up all the weeds and stuff and and clears the land for you and then uh, at the end of the day you've got a fertilized plot ready ready to grow. Oh nice. So chickens are voracious. If you let them go in this courtyard two months later you would have like bare ground. They're just they'll they'll eat almost anything that wow. that grows. There are no dryers uh, to dry clothes in this building are there? Um, there actually are, but we there do, are. we, <laughs> okay. we, you know, when you're in a hurry or you have something delicate or something, sometimes we, we'll use an electric dryer or, or, I mean, a gas dryer. Uh, but, uh, in, like in my unit, I have a washing machine, but I don't have a dryer. Um, and we do use this, uh, high tech, uh, newfangled solar clothing dryer here, also called a clothesline. Uh -huh. nice. This is a pineapple guava called a, called a feijoa. You can see like pineapple here, guava. Nice. Here, here's the here's the fruit. These are almost ripe. They usually come in August. They'll they'll start falling when they're ripe. It's like I lately I've been looking around on the ground saying, oh, when when are the feijoas going nice, <laughs> to come nice. from for my breakfast cereal? So this um, this section right here, which looks a little bit lush, I'm going to reveal. This is actually the end of the gray water system that runs from my washing machine. So. If we look down here, we can see there is a black pipe right here, and there are little outlets that run into kind of little chambers. And so this is the this is where my wash water goes at the end of the day. It's growing tomatoes, blackberries. There's actually some um, artichokes. Well, there's a couple of artichokes that are that are already bloomed. We'll take a look at those. I've actually been to Eco Village one other time, and I, I noticed that you've been chiseling up the pavement or removing some of the pavement to put in more ground, more soil. Yeah, exactly. So we, you know, we have um, over time reduced the number of cars, and so we have very little parking. I mean, we have 48 units of housing, and we had about maybe 10 parking spaces, and we've narrowed that down to like four or five um, and so we decided that we would rather have gardens so we pulled up uh, broke this concrete we're using sledgehammer so uh, and uh, we uh, we had very clay soil that was hard to grow stuff in so we basically again just covered it with the mulch you know always always the the first phase of the eco village solution is yeah. use lots of mulch and uh, and we planned a garden here soon um, but we're sort of just uh, readying the soil. Actually, it's been open for about a year, so it should be it should be somewhat ready. But it, it's sort of the it was covered for maybe 80 years, so with concrete, so it's sort of regenerating itself and airing out and and allowing some of that organic matter to mix with that clay soil. Are the people at Eco Village considering? Uh, taking up all of this pavement in this area? Well, we talked about it. When we bought the buildings, we didn't kick anybody out. So there's existing neighbors that lived here for 20 years who who still drive and still park and who we're not going to kick out. Um, and then there's also a couple. There's a guy with a coffee business who has a big van that he takes to farmer's market. So mm -hmm. there are there's a need for a little bit of parking. And, and so at this point, we're planning on taking up basically half this concrete, just a little more than we have. Um, and doing doing garden and probably a couple trees here, uh, and then someday we'll get to the rest of that. But it's sort very of cool. the project is very incremental. We sort of like start working on something and try it and move on to the next thing and stuff. And it's see moved it, maybe so, 15 so. feet since I've been here last. It's <laughs> yeah, nice to see that. Uh, let's, let's let's continue. Let's take a look at where this um, where the gray water comes from. Right behind this window here is uh, my washing machine, and so you can see this white pipe comes out the window. It actually has a little vent, and that, that prevents uh, 
water from being sucked in when you first start the machine. Sure. The water comes down here, okay. goes under the ground, under these tiles, and then out along that wall and out to where we just saw where the um, where the feijoa tree is yeah. growing and where the tomatoes and artichokes were. So gray water is actually pretty good. It's pretty hard to do a, it's pretty hard to water like a lawn with gray water. You want to, um, it doesn't spread out very evenly. It mm -hmm. sort of soaks in in one place. Sure. And so it's really good for, uh, especially like tropical fruit trees like banana and feijoa, um, papaya, stuff that, stuff that grows in Southern California, but um, doesn't, it will, it's just a lot happier if it gets a little more water than we have around here. Mm -hmm. And what are we so, looking at over here? Well, looks like a bike shop. Let's take a look at what's called the bike morgue. So, um, Jimmy, whose unit we took a look at, uh, started uh, a, a thing called the Bicycle Kitchen, which is actually a nonprofit bike shop, which has since moved out to its own storefront. Um, but he has uh, his own kind of uh, personal bike shop <laughs> in this garage. And so it's, uh, and we all, you know, when, when- This is his own personal bike shop. He, how many bikes does he own? There seem to be like a hundred bikes in here. Yeah, <laughs> we get, you know, we get like uh, donated bikes and, and just random, you know, he's a, he's a bike messenger and 90% of us are more bike as a primary mode. And so um, a few of these belong to other people. In fact, there's, I just broke a frame and he's supposed to like transfer my stuff onto this other frame and stuff. So one of those is up there is He's mine. a great friend to have if you're <laughs> yeah. a biker. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So let's, on the bike theme, let's walk over to this. These look like uh, bike frames. These are. So when we, when we, when the, the bike kitchen, the kind of non-profit bike shop first started here, um, we started getting all these donated bikes and some of them were good and we used them and some of them were junk and we uh, started putting them in sort of a scrap heap. So. We, um, in deciding to take out some of the concrete here, one of the, one of the uh, mitigations or how should I say compromises we made, we wanted to take out that fence that we walked through. And so we told the folks who park here that we would put a fence up in the alley if we could take out that fence and take out that parking. And so, um, so we, we got a basic fence, like a frame installed, and then we welded this uh, artistic gate, which we actually just uh, are still are working on. We primed part of it uh, a couple weeks ago at a work party. We call it um, multiple centers of initiative. Okay. And what that is, is a philosophy that we try to follow. And so multiple centers of initiative means instead of like a corporate model that says you have the boss and the people who follow his or her orders um, and it's a very hierarchical centralized structure, we try to have sort of a decentralized structure that says if you, if you have something you're interested in and you want to take initiative, you should, you should just do it. I mean, and you should do it openly and not covertly or whatever. And you, you, you shouldn't do something big that's irreversible, mm -hmm. but, but you shouldn't have to get a lot of approvals and headaches to, uh, to do something. So, uh, and, and we, we sometimes have conflict around some of that, but so this has sort of multiple centers. It has a sort of solar center here and, um, this, this part has all kinds of curved bike parts, so we call it the curvaceous center, and there's sort of another, like, a starburst center here. So, cool. got, got another um, pomegranate tree here. Some nice pomegranates, almost ready. Let's go out over this way, through that, the little gate over there. Okay. Um, this is the, the second building we purchased actually in 1999. We've got more fruit trees here. Here's a, this is actually a mulberry. Mulberry. This is a persimmon. Okay. See our persimmons are, it's a nice uh, winter fruiting tree that kind of balances out a lot of your other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. spring trees. This is a project that I worked on called uh, the Las Trincheras, which is sort of the retaining walls or terraces in Spanish. Okay. And, uh, what it is, is it used to be kind of, you can see there's a section of it over there that's still, used to be just a sloped area with grass. Uh -huh. And when you water that, uh, the water runs off really easily. So if you create terraces along level contours, when water, when rainwater comes, 
instead of that water running off your ground, that water soaks into your ground. So this is sort of a, it's called a passive rainwater harvesting earthwork.